Sleep paralysis <laughs> is terrifying. I know even Kendall Jenner is also known to have this condition. But rather than telling her story, I'll begin the animation with my own experience. Back in 2010, I was studying hard for my med school entry exam. Stress, anxiety, depression, and several other bad habits ultimately led to very little sleep time. The quality of sleep was even worse. I used to sleep early and wake up to my alarm at 3 a.m. One night, I woke up before the alarm. I was fully aware, but I couldn't speak or move. I was in total paralysis. I felt something was suffocating me by sitting on my chest. To make things worse, I started to hallucinate. I saw a shadow of an ominous presence. I panicked, but unfortunately, there was no escape for me in this nightmarish reality. The human wake sleep cycle has three distinct phases. Phase one is wakefulness. In wakefulness, the brain is highly active. It receives signals from the peripheral sensory organs and generates vivid experiences like vision, sounds, touch, and etc. So what keeps us awake? Wakefulness centers are scattered around in the brainstem, hypothalamus, and the basal forebrain, and are collectively known as the Ascending Reticular Formation, or ARAS. The ARAS sends excitatory signals in the form of neurotransmitters acetylcholine, norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine to excite the cerebral cortex where vivid experiences such as vision, touch, and sounds are generated. The brain also keeps the muscles active during wakefulness, so the person can carry out actions based on vivid perceptions. The second phase is non-REM sleep. In this stage, the sleep center, which is primarily the ventrolateral preoptic nucleus, or VLPO, in the hypothalamus, secretes GABA and shuts down the ascending reticular formation. As a result, your brain's higher centers shut down and all your vivid experiences are halted. Yes, that means you don't dream during non-REM sleep. There are three stages in non-REM sleep. While the body gradually drifts through these three stages, your sleep gets deeper and your breathing becomes more rhythmic. The third phase is the REM or rapid eye movement sleep. Paradoxically, the ARAS becomes active again and excites the higher centers. Can you guess what happens when these higher centers are activated? Vivid experiences like sounds and visions are again generated. But in REM sleep, these experiences are generated without utilizing the signals from sensory organs. What do we call these internally generated vivid experiences? Yes, we call them dreams. The brain also secretes glycine and GABA, which puts your body into a temporary state of paralysis. The REM paralysis affects all the body muscles except the eye and respiratory muscles. The purpose of REM paralysis is to prevent you from acting out your dreams. Sleep paralysis is a disorder of the third phase or REM phase. This occurs when you suddenly become awake while the body is in REM paralysis. Since the breathing is still under the rhythmic control of REM sleep, you feel as if something is sitting on your chest. Three types of hallucinations are associated with sleep paralysis. The most common variant is intruder-type hallucinations. The second variant is autoscopic hallucinations, where the persons feel an out-of-body experience. The third variant is incubus hallucinations, where the affected patients feel a demon sitting on their chest. All these hallucinations fall under hypnopompic hallucinations which are physiological hallucinations one can experience when waking up. So, why does sleep paralysis occur? Disruption of sleep inertia due to poor sleep causes sleep paralysis. Narcolepsy, obstructive sleep apnea, and other sleep disorders are known causes of sleep paralysis. In healthy people, things like stress, post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, and substance abuse are the usual culprits. Researches suggest a possible genetic association as well. The diagnosis is clinical and doesn't require any investigations. However, sleep studies will be used if the doctors suspect the condition is secondary to narcolepsy or another sleeping disorder. How to prevent and treat sleep paralysis? Get a quality sleep time of six to eight hours a day. A simple sleep schedule with a fixed bedtime can be helpful to prevent sleep paralysis and also to keep your head refreshed. Oh, and sleeping on the back or in a supine position is also linked to a higher incidence of sleep paralysis.
so why not try another position? In serious cases, medications like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors (SSRI) and tricyclic antidepressants (TCA) are prescribed. Trials are undergoing to evaluate the efficacy of drugs like pimavanserin and GHB, especially in people with narcolepsy. Prazosin is helpful in people with PTSD. Cognitive behavioral therapy and psychiatric medications will be helpful if you have an underlying psychiatric condition. Narcolepsy and obstructive sleep apnea patients need expert help to improve the symptoms. If you are interested to read more about good sleep practices, follow the link in the description to read my article about sleep hygiene. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon with another interesting medical case.